Hi everybody, today we're gonna microwave some phones in the name of science, and here's why. One of the things that I've noticed lately is people spending a lot of time troubleshooting a board and reporting a question on the forum, on iPad Rehab Forum, or um, around the, the internet, quote requests, emails, conversations. And I've noticed that people are, are spending a lot of time uh, looking for problems that if they knew at the beginning, hey, this is really unsolvable, then they, they wouldn't choose to do that. Uh, this particular case really, really is a great example of this. I think that this phone might have been microwaved. And in microwaving the phone, I think that the phone has developed internal short circuits internal to the logic board itself, and therefore is really not a, com a candidate for data recovery or to be a phone again. Um, this, I, I think I'm the third person to look at this phone, and I can see an enormous amount of work that's gone into troubleshooting this board. And I think that, that you know these guys, if they could kind of look at it with fresh eyes, might choose to say, hey, I think this board was microwaved, and microwave boards are really not great candidates for repair. So let's take a look at this story and see what you guys think. Now I don't know that this board was microwaved, so we're going to do some experiments. We're going to intentionally microwave some other boards and see if it looks like the way this board's presenting. So let's start by taking a look at this board. This is an iPhone. Uh, this is an iPhone 6. And Let's take a look under the microscope at the current state of this board. So let's get rid of hand camera. Here we go under the microscope. Okay, and we'll try to kind of trace some footprints of the folks that have seen this board before. So as we look over it, looking here, this jumps out at me because this is a little bit unusual. I see a sign of heat. That solder ball there, these little Mickey Mouse ears, that means that heat was here. And that's an unusual place for a technician to put heat. Nobody would be working out over here. This is way on the end of the board. Um, then around here I can see somebody spent a lot of time. The rear camera connector is gone. A whole bunch of guys are gone. This would to be typical if somebody was troubleshooting some sort of a 1v8 power line problem. Um, a lot of that goes there. This is uh, somebody troubleshooting, uh, troubleshooting a VCC main problem. Both of those guys have VCC main. Backlight is missing. So much work. Uh, just pretty much every chip on the board that has any connection to the main power rail is gone. So somebody's really going after troubleshooting to find the source of what they think is a main power rail short. We look around, more everything that has to do with VCC main. Somebody really wanted to find this short. And there's nothing wrong with doing it like this. If you know that a line is short, you can find the cause of it if you go after every potential candidate and just eliminate them one by one. All right, this kind of want to make sure they don't have a mechanical bridge here, which close, but they don't. And looking around, looking around, this is a big, big tough one. There's the PMIC is gone and it is missing a, at least one pad here that's going to be important, most likely. All VCC main caps are gone for the most part. I think there's um, I might be able to find one or two. Yeah, over here, this, these two I think are VCC main caps. Um, but that guy's gone, him and his brother are gone. So VCC main, the Wi-Fi chip is entirely gone, including the VCC main caps that are around there. All right, so that means that this, someone has spent a significant, huge amount of time going after a VCC main short. And if we read the note, the note, describes a fairly reasonable line of thinking where this guy details, which I love it when people do send these notes with prior repair attempt. Um, he knew right away that it had both a VCC main and a 1V8 line uh, short. It's unusual to have a full short on two different lines. Um, he, he spent some time trying to clear it. Uh, he looked for heat. Here's another big clue. He looked for a heat signature on VCC main and he didn't find anything getting hot. So why would something not get hot? Well, what does it take for something to get hot? Things get hot when they have a really, really high resistance, like a tiny little wire when you have a ton of current going through it. Uh, a high voltage pushing a lot of current through something with a really high resistance, that's what generates heat. If instead you have like a big fat wire 
it doesn't get hot, just like, you know, the, the electrical wires in this building aren't really getting hot right now because they're big, fat, heavy-duty wires. So if you think about what an internal board short, like a trace in the board, the big, fat wire for main touching ground in the board, that's like big, fat wire. It's not going to get hot. So when you see a lack of heat, that could point to a internal board short, for example. So that's sort of another clue on this one. Um, and then he goes on about how he... Uh, just really killed himself to try to, to find the cause of this VCC main short and ultimately um, removed every single thing on the line. So here's where uh, we're going to start just with a multimeter to kind of get an idea. Well, what's up with this board now with everything missing? And let's get out our multimeter, check it around. Don't worry. Soon enough, we'll be throwing phones in that microwave. But we want to be thorough. So let's get a reading on VCC main in diode mode and the reading is 0.643 it's a really odd reading and there's really not very much left on this line honestly you'd expect it to be open line when it really has no path to ground because there's nothing left on the line um, but let's check on his other he claims that 1v8 has also a short and it does. It has a full short to ground on the 1v8 power rail. Now, there's not that much damage on the board in terms of original water damage. There's very little, possibly even none. This board may have never seen water. I haven't really seen anything that jumps out at me as water damage. So that's another sort of tell. How did a board get two different problems when there really doesn't look like there was maybe much, maybe none, actual water damage. I don't see any oxidation or corrosion on the board itself. Now, whenever I see that somebody's been operating around the CPU, then before I do anything else, I want to take a look at the CPU. So this is unfortunate that somebody has tweezer damaged the corner of it. Um, that may not necessarily, that's unfortunate, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker. Um, so let's go ahead and probe around here. And on 1v8 SD RAM, 1v8 SD RAM line, also full short, that's not good. Uh, this is a CPU power line, also full short, that's not good. And then if we, you know, come around here, let's check backlight. Should be nothing left on backlight. Open line, so nothing is left on backlight. Full short there. Full short here. So one of those is the 1v2 SD RAM line. I'm pretty sure I'd have to look it up. But the bottom line is that there, there are shorts on pretty much every, every line that we've tested pretty much on this board, even though it really doesn't have a whole lot of water damage. So let's think, how could it come to be like this? One idea is that, oh, well, it had some minor problem, but now it's really got a lot of technician damage. Um, and if we were to put some effort into to tracing out the potential causes or you know consequences of things like tweezer damage here at the corner of the CPU, I don't think that we could come up with a mechanism that would really um, answer for why we have extensive shorts on, on lines that are all over the place. I don't think that, that just that could do it. I also don't think that heat could do it either because I don't see any signs of um, of like the excess top heat really quickly causing these these uh, you know caps to pop up solder balls as would be expected if during the technicians uh, changing of uh, the power management chip etc there was too much heat but what I do think is that you could have uh, something like microwave damage and that could cause the internal traces within the board to start touching each other. Hey, Christine, we're getting ready to microwave some phones. Don't tell Sunday. Okay, so let's see. Um, put it in the microwave. Yes, let's do. All right, so how are we going to do this? The one thing, as I, as I started planning this microwave video, um, because I, my point here is for you guys to be able to recognize what does microwave damage look like. So I, I started to plan the video. I wanted to look up how do microwaves work. And I think that's really interesting. And I think you should, you should do it as well. One of the things that I thought was cool was from a site called Evil Mad Scientist that was talking about doing these experiments that uh, if you look up how the microwave works, it's got a magnetron. Remember that from the right to repair hearing? The magnetron inside. And the magnetron generates microwaves and the microwaves tra stay trapped inside this thing because this is a great big metal box. Um, 
One thing I learned today is that you can put a big sheet of metal in there because this is a metal box. So I didn't realize that only things like crinkly aluminum foil or really thin wire would actually uh, not be compatible with the microwave uh, microwaves that are in there. If you have a big thick piece of metal that's heavy, then it's not going to induce those electrical currents or arc or be bothered by them. Um, the other thing that I learned, which I thought was pretty cool, is that the way the magnetron generates the microwaves, it's not really diffuse. It's sort of ta targeted or focused. And this is going to be different depending on your actual microwave or brand or size. So uh, these guys did an experiment where they kind of randomly found out, hey, if we put these like little snack uh, Poppadum cakes uh, in a microwave, you can actually see the pattern of the microwaves in your microwave oven and where they head. I didn't know that. I thought that it was kind of really diffuse. So right before I started this video, I tossed in here um, a little bit of thermal receipt tape. I went over and printed out a couple of blank receipts and I put them in the microwave. And I would do it again, except it took like three minutes. I don't think you want to sit here and wait for that. So look at what it looks like. Just taping receipt taper. Put some captain tape. See that? I taped some receipts to the glass tray that goes around and around. And this was really cool that it has a pattern and this is why you have food that you put in like your lean cuisine and it comes out like boiling hot in the center and then just ice ice cold in the in the middle that it really doesn't heat evenly that there's one sort of center uh, magnetron output where all the microwaves kind of generate right in the center right in the center of the microwave and then as this kind of rotates around on the plate there's an offset one so another sort of offset magnetron output over here that seems to be secondary. It took about two minutes for there to be enough heat to generate this mark on the receipt tape. And then it was just, it was just hot in the center and nowhere else for a long time. It took like another two minutes for it to show this, you know, kind of uh, secondary signature. So now you know, it really doesn't matter where you put that popcorn bag in the microwave. If you put it, you know, kind of over here instead of right in the center, it's gonna just kind of ride around in the cool area and not actually experience any microwave radiation and nothing's gonna happen. So, you know, that's why I'm guessing that all those instructions tell you, you know, stir the stuff and then stick it back in or flip it over. That really does make a big difference. So what does that mean for us? It means that if we were going to um, if we were going to do experiments with phones, it's going to matter the placement. So if you took a bunch of phones and you put them in the microwave, if you placed it right in the center, you'll have a stronger effect than if you placed it kind of like offset a little bit. And remember, this pattern is going to vary. This I think is going to be really fun. I'm going to take some home and do it with the kids because I think you can just learn so much from just kind of how does the world around you work. So I, I uh, learned something today about microwaves. And thanks for whatever donation that I just heard. I didn't see that on screen, so I appreciate that for sure. All right, so let's do an experiment. What happens if we put this iPhone 5C? Let's take a look at it. So this is just one of the donor iPhone 5Cs that somebody has donated to us. Maybe it was iCloud locked, or maybe it was um, you know something that uh, so we got data off of and they don't don't need it anymore and it doesn't charge or it had some problem um, but this one let's go back and look at it under the microscope so what I want what I want for you guys to learn and me too because I don't know what's gonna happen is what does mild microwave damage look like in an iPhone we can guess that if we shove this in here for five minutes it's gonna be a fire but what does it look like if you're one of those guys that's kind of like, I heard that if you put your phone in the microwave for one minute that it like magically charges, well, maybe you should do it. Or, you know, oh, gee, I just dropped my phone in the toilet, but I want to I don't want to wait. So I'm going to try to dry it out and put it in the microwave. Uh, and you kind of know it's a bad idea, but you kind of are open to it. And so you're going to do it. And when you're in that moment where you're going to do it, you're going to be a, not sure. You don't, really don't want to ruin your phone. So you're just going to kind of tell yourself that 
if you see any kind of spark or weird noise, you're going to hit the eject button and say, cancel that. So I want to know what happens to a phone for just a few seconds in a microwave. And let's see if we can figure that out. That's our experiment today, guys. So let's do a check. Let's see. Um, I have to remember to take a bunch of receipt paper with me when I buy my next microwave. Yeah, totally. I totally want to do that as well because, you know, that evil mad scientist Google that microwave um, and see what they did because some of the microwaves were like, oh, wow, that's totally even. And other ones were like, whoa, that is the worst microwave ever. All right, let's get back to the um, microscope view. All right, so this is an iPhone 5C, so it's not a 6. I didn't have a bunch of 6s to kill. But let's look, especially here around places that are kind of like antenna-like on the, on the phone. So, um, you know, kind of around here, this is our camera. Our sticker is intact. I've taken the battery out for obvious reasons. Sim, uh, we're looking at like plastics and things that are more likely, oh, this must have been water damage. Looking at the charge port, you know, we know that that microwave radiation is going to excite water molecules, sugar molecules, fats, things like that. That's how it cooks food um, and some plastics, but not all. So we don't really know how the phone will behave. Now, the 5C has a plastic housing, so I, that's why I picked the 5C. 5C stands for cheap and fun. So we'll go ahead and give this a try. So I'm going to stick this in here and let's see what happens if we go with doing it with, you know, kind of that idea that, you know, I'm not really sure if this is a good idea. I'm going to try it, but I'm going to just bail on it. If I, if, if anything looks like it's not legit, I'm going to bail on it. All right. So we've got no battery. I am going to put a screen on it. Okay, so here we go. Seems intact. Now I've got the chroma filter for my green screen, so it makes it a little look a little bit wonky. We can look at it as well over here. And something is up with the Go. The GoPro has somehow like turned itself into cat lens. All right, let's do it. Now I'm going to put it right in the center, and I'm going to figure out how to that back on. Get back in there. Okay. All right, so what we learned is being exactly in the center is important. So let's tip this back. Okay. And let's turn this off to be less distracting. All right, and I'm going to put time cook let's clear one minute so let's set this up like you would you're you're gonna uh you think it might be a bad idea so you're gonna kind of just uh hang out by it all right let's see what happens so we've heard on the internet oh you know you can charge up your phone like instantly in, in a microwave for one minute. So we set it for one minute and let's hit start. Let me try to make it so that you guys can see in here. Ready? Start. All right, all's well. One second. Oh God. So that's what it would be like. I just saw, I saw a little tiny bit of fire. Did you guys see that? right like zzz, zzz. so that was four seconds according to the microwave four seconds so it was in there for four seconds and i uh, that would be enough i saw a little tiny little spark and heard sizz, sizzle sizzle and that would have made me stop and say oh my god now that would be in theory pretty minor right so let's take a look at this all right let's take a look at the housing now it smells like honestly it's it smells like um 
the cap guns when you're a little kid, cap gun, pow pow, you know, that sort of whatever chemical smell that is, that's what it smells like around here. Pretty strong. Like I'm gonna get in trouble. If Sunday walks in, this is her microwave, she doesn't have any idea that I was gonna throw phones in it today. And I'm hoping to like clean it out and put it back and she'll never know. I'm sure she doesn't watch my channel. But if she were to walk in right now, she would say, what is that smell? Other than that, I don't really see anything on the outside, so maybe we got away with it. Um, but let's go ahead and open this up and see. Let's see. You were a little kid. Yes, way back, way back in the day. Okay, so let's see if we can notice anything. Oh, I can see some stuff on the screen. Let's go ahead and have you guys look at it with me under, under the microscope. Oh, it really stinks too. Woo! Ah! Um, okay, so let's go back to the microscope. All right, let's take a look. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so I'm looking on the screen and I can see like a little bit of burn. Mark. Look at the, look at the edge of the home button. Look at that. That's burn. You can tell that it looks like burn. All right, looking around. Whoa, look at that. This was just seconds, four seconds. Look at that burn on the front camera. Sheesh. All right, let's look in the phone itself. All right, so that looks okay. Let's go ahead and take off the screen. P-U, oh man. All right. Okay, so now we're looking back here. And so we were here already. So this is um, burn that w definitely wasn't there before. And then remember, like, kind of looking at, like, areas that are, that are kind of, like, antenna-like. That will be, like, thin metal, like thin wires. All right, so there seems to be some... God, oh, my God, look at this chip. Sheesh. I really wish I had been the first one to see that other phone. Look at this chip. It is just destroyed. Look at that. That is, I've never seen that before. So there you go. This is the sort of what I want you guys to sort of see and notice signs of microwave damage. You know, it looks pretty minor, but unless you are you know, really looking for it, in which case it really stands out. All right. So let's look at rear cam. On this one seems okay. Connectors seem okay. Nothing's bad. Nothing's going on over here. Um, but under here, look at this burn. Look at the... God, look at the flex here. It's completely destroyed. This is the front, um, the power button and, and uh, volume flex is just destroyed. Jeez. So focal though, look at that, just that spot when everything else around it is totally fine. SIM, I thought maybe the SIM would melt. It did not, not at four seconds. It looks totally fine. Um, around here, I don't, I'd have to look back and see whether or not this mark was here. It probably was, because I don't see any signs of melting or burn around here. All right, down here, this looks, Okay, except for, geez, look like certain spots. Look at this. Oh my gosh, this plastic over here is just annihilated. But everything else around it is fine. Look at that. This is, look at that. It's plastic that is like you put a lighter on it. Look at that. That's really, really something. And then down there, where that antenna wire is. Look at the uh, antenna wire hotspot. Oh my God, the metal of the antenna. Whoa, look at that. That is just gone. Oh my gosh. That, that is the, that is why, <laughs> whoa, there's a hole all the way down through the frame. This is why we don't fix microwave damage. I mean, if you think about that, that is so severe in that tiny little spot. Yeah, I bet it was close to coming all the way through. Um, it's so severe in that tiny little spot, it destroyed the metal of 
um, the other end of this wire. So this wire goes from here and it goes down through there and this is the other end of it and it's just absolutely destroyed, it's missing. If that happened internal to the logic board, then you, you would not want to work on this phone. You know, that's, that's really unrecoverable. That happened to, you know, if, you're, if, if you have chips, like your CPU is like that on the inside, then you really don't want to put time into this board. All right, who thinks that we should um, do, do it a little bit longer? Let's see. Let's see what happens if you leave it in there for like 10 seconds. Let's see. 10 seconds, who thinks we should do 10 seconds? Consider microwave damage a thunderstorm in your phone. I like it, a, a, a terrible summer heat lightning and thunderstorm inside your phone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is this, wow. All right, Wi-Fi is on the same as microwaves. All right, energy is a beast, okay. This is what happens to transmit our antenna cable after a lightning hit. Yes, well, I would not want to be on the receiving end of that. Okay, here we go. Let's, just for fun, since this is destroyed anyway, I mean, this, this phone, if it came to you from the way it looks here, if the, you know, <laughs> think about the, the reality of this kind of scenario. It goes like this, mom's not home. I want to charge up my phone. I read this thing on the internet. I'm going to try it. Nobody's looking. Stick it in there. I know this is stupid, but friends are laughing. Do it, do it, ha ah. Hit go. Four seconds later, oh shit, eject. And the phone is destroyed, you know? And then you go to the cell phone repair shop. That's you guys. Uh, I don't know what happened. It just stopped working. Can you fix my phone? That's why I want for you guys to kind of have this on your radar screen. But let's do it. Let's say that you were doing the same scenario, except your friends grabbed your hand so that you couldn't just grab it back out. All right, so let's reset the clock. We're gonna reset clear time, one minute. All right, now let's see what happens if we go for 10 seconds. Ready? All right, here we go. Two seconds. Uh-oh, I see flame. I see smoke. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh! Ugh. I saw fire and there, this thing's smoking now. Can you see that? Oh. <coughs> God, I need to, this is the time where I really need to kick on the fume extractor. All right, I think if, if it had had a few more seconds, this whole thing would be on fire. If it had the lithium ion battery in it, then this whole microwave would probably be on fire. All right, now let's see. Let's see what happened now. Back. The outside still looks like you wouldn't, you wouldn't notice. <laughs> Somebody brought you this and said, stop working. You'd be like, sure, let's take a look. Oh man. <laughs> Hopefully popcorn will come out. Yeah, exactly. I'm still wondering what would happen with the battery. Yes, please let us know once you try it. Just go over to iPad Rehab Forum and 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 say, hey, I did it. Oh geez, I'm having trouble getting it. Uh yeah, like the screen no longer snaps out up here by the mute. Oh yeah, it's a little, let's get a little bit of a bubble there. Oh, and it stacks to high heaven. Oh my God, this is, I think that the, the smell would be the biggest tell, I think, on one that had just happened that day. The smell may not stick around, so I don't think the absence of the smell really means anything. Well, yeah, this is really tough to get that screen off. Oh, and now I can see why. All right. Here's where it was hard for me to get the screen off. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's, ugh. oh my God. That's all just burnt plastic of the edge of the screen. Look at the little bracket. Yeah, that's, that's not cool. I wish that there was a way to like YouTube record the smell. 
It's just it's totally cap gun smell. Whatever it is, let me look that up. All right, so back up here in the top of the foam. Interestingly, this antenna doesn't have anything wrong with it. It's totally fine. Um, this is really, oh, really destroyed. Oh my gosh. Oh geez, that's just so, so severe in such a short, short time. But it's very focal. All right, so then, you know, much of it's fine. This all looks fine, this all looks fine. Sim itself didn't bubble up, that totally looks fine. You know, I think that that's the thing. As far as the logic board is concerned, if somebody sent me this logic board, I would notice this chip and I would be concerned about it. But on the top side, at least, there's nothing about the logic board that would really jump out at me and say, oh yeah, definitely microwave. Uh, the housing, though, really doesn't lie. The housing doesn't lie. So if we look back over here, we can see this has kind of gotten worse. And it just seems really focal. You know, on, on this time, the fire was up in this top corner by vibrator motor. And it really spared much of the board. Okay, so here's the big question. And I want for you guys to weigh in here on chat because this is a court case, this iPhone 6 here that we're supposed to try to get data from. So this is somebody's important court case and I believe that they have an interest in seeing what we find here on this video. So chime in what you guys think as professionals that work in this industry, most of you guys, um, and tell us what you think. So what we're gonna do now, we've already looked at this board where somebody has invested tremendous time trying to clear multiple shorts on the board when there's really no water damage or any other kind of you know physical damage that would have been there prior to the repair attempt. So on day one, this would have looked like a pretty clean board itself. Um, so I want for you guys to tell me about what you think as we look at this housing. All right, so let's take a look and I will be checking on chat to see what your opinion is. All right, so let's see. All right, so this is, it's not a 5C, this is a 6. So we're just looking at the housing to guess whether or not this board was microwaved. All right, so that's, this corner looks totally fine. All right, and you guys can ask questions and I'll try to, um, I'll try to answer that. Uh, gunpowder, yeah, gunpowder, holy hell. Put it in rice, it'll be fine. All right, so here we are at the top of the phone. And I'll show you what, and I haven't done anything to this housing, and I am not the first person to see this, so I can't speak to whether or not any technician prior to me were, you know, used a hot air gun or something with the board still in the housing. It'd be unusual, but I can't say that didn't happen. Uh, so here is the rear camera, and you can see that the rear camera is missing its connector. So that's gone. So the rear camera connector is gone, and if you remember the board, there was a significant amount of you know, the, the <laughs> mating side of the rear camera connector is also gone, which is an odd place to kind of be starting. How do you, how do you get over there? And a lot of these components in here are gone. And that all is usually when somebody's troubleshooting a 1v8 short, which this device still has. So if there was a lightning strike that went down the 1v8 line, you know, then anything on 1v8, like CPU, like NAND, would then um, have a really easy path to having internal sizzling of those wires internal to the chip itself. And of course you can't get data without a functioning CPU. There's lots of 1v8 line connections under there. All right, back to the, to the phone itself. So how did it come to be like this? We don't know, but for me, I think most likely case would be microwave damage. All right, let's kind of con continue on and look around. So we're looking at other plastics and metal in the board. 
That I can't say whether that's abnormal or not. Charge port uh, flex seems okay, right? But this is really what jumped out at me the first time I looked at this phone, the loudspeaker. So look at this loudspeaker. This is heat damage. See how it's now uneven and blistered and it has that sort of ozone looking, you know, stuff. Let's see if we can get any removed that we can pick up. Yeah, a little bit. Look at this. This is look at the loudspeaker. You don't get plastic. It does. It's really hard to come up with a mechanism of how could this become like this. This is definitely heat, a large amount of heat, but in a very focal spot. You know, here there was a lot of heat, but not here. You know, that's that's what we're talking about. All right. Here's this uh, antenna area. All right, and then over here same kind of it looks really similar in my opinion to the 5c where you've got plastics that are unaffected you know this is all very native there's nothing wrong with that and then you've got these very focal spots where you have you know serious damage look at this this side is fine it was kind of protected maybe by that screw being a heat sink possibly i don't know um, but look at this heat damage just right there in that spot uh, when all around it, other plastics are fine. All right, so that was my observation. We've got a spot of melted plastic here that's very focal when other areas around it are fine. We have um, a spot of very melted loudspeaker on the side of it. Um, we have a little bit of discoloration right there maybe. Um, and then this loudspeaker in general seems to just be very uneven and um, definitely heated. Charge port flex seems okay. This battery, I have no way to know whether it's the native battery or not. It would be typical for a shop to change the battery in a phone that they were troubleshooting, so we don't know. No sign of water entry, white water damage sticker there. Um, and then really, really horribly damaged rear camera. Remember, the front camera on our 5C experiment was really, really horribly damaged, but the other camera was not. So again, it kind of goes with this just very severe, but very focal damage. Other spots look in, other plastics look entirely unaffected. All right, this uh, antenna stuff under this sticker looks, uh, or under this piece of tape looks entirely unaffected. So there you go. This, guys, this is what this is what microwave damage looks like. So be suspicious if you have a phone that has multiple short circuits on uh, it, it's that's it, not been water damaged, where multiple lines are affected. If that is paired with a housing where you have very focal areas of extreme heat on plastics. Um, then that is what microwave damage looks like. And if we kind of compare between our, um, you know, kind of our experimental 5C, five, five you know, camera, it's got that, you know, kind of fluxy residue and extreme damage there, but then, you know, fairly, you know, no damage at all on these flexes. You know, flexes are totally fine. Camera de totally destroyed. You know, it seems like a match where we again have, you know, that same kind of, you know, really, you know, he's adhesive just fried and so much heat that the connector came off, you know, boiled live plastic. And then over here, just totally fine. Everything's cool. Nothing ever happened. All right. So that's microwave. Uh, microwave damage let's see that's heat from the fast charging yeah exactly all right uh the reflective properties of the microwave sparks in heat fire melting anywhere there's metal stuff should be melted all right so uh let's check in with chat and see what's your final answer 
do you believe that this phone uh, was microwaved? Do you think this phone was microwaved? Let's hear it. Let's take a show of hands. All right, and see what's on chat. I may do, um, I may do another stream. There's another stream I wanted to do, just a little kind of thing to, to show you guys. Um, let's see, fast charger. Jason S. says that he had a customer do this a few weeks ago. Making bombs, gunpowder, holy hell. <laughs> Let me borrow your phone, zap. Bombardment of microwaves to the NAND and CPU, probably not good, slim chance of recovery. Yes, exactly. Linus Tech Tips is asking for help to get a new screen on his iMac as Apple won't repair it. Could you glue some iPad screens on it for him? Sure. The connectors are missing from the cables. Definitely gonna take a lot of rice. Okay, so let's see if you guys had an opinion. Are all the antenna points, not all of them. So one of them is you know, destroyed, but not all of them. I got a vote for yes from professional Chris Long. Yes, says Paul. Yes, says Jason S. Yes, says Shay Armstrong. Uh, is it possible a battery going on far, would, fire would result in the same? Uh, not in my experience. Battery fires are very, um, very <laughs> explosive. There's a ton of char in the housing. It's very obvious. It's unmistakable. Um, there, there's no way that you could clean a housing to make it look like it never had a battery. Uh, the battery fire will melt any wires or antennas. Um, just, just making them just a the, the insulation gone, but the wire intact, if that makes sense. So they'll just be like really thin little wires instead of a fat antenna. Um, and there will be really broad, widespread, obvious burn damage across a large area. Not focal pockets, but a wide, large area of damage. If you microwave this phone so that the battery caught on fire, it would probably look really similar to that. Okay, um, Okay. so that's it. I just wanted you guys to see what microwave damage looks like and to have that on your radar screen because some of us, you know, it's hard for us to imagine that any anybody would do it, but, you know, kids will do anything. The internet can be, a, you know, kind of a, a, a place where everybody at some point in their life has to learn a hard lesson in being a skeptic and using their brain. And if you see a phone that comes to you with no obvious water damage, where you know the, the history is kind of, I don't know, just stop working. And uh, you detect multiple shorts and you see very focal but very severe damage to plastics melting in spots that are correlated to antennas, Wi-Fi, any RF functions in the device, then you might want to just hand that one right back and say, I'm sorry, we can't help you. And that's going to be what I'm going to say on this phone. Thanks for giving it a shot, but we can't help you with this one. All right, see you guys next time.